Hi everyone, Karthik sir here. Let's do the revision of chapter number one of CA Interlaw that is preliminaries. Preliminaries, as you know, contains section number one and section number two. Section number one is just about the short title, extent, commencement, and application of the Companies Act, and section number two, as you know, is definitions. Okay, so let's start with this area. First is your applicability of this act. Companies Act is applicable to T basic companies, companies which are incorporated under this act or under any other previous company law, banking companies, electricity companies, that is companies which are in the supply or generation of electricity, companies which are formed under any special act, insurance companies, and finally, central government notified companies like your uh, NHAI, that is National Highways Authority of India Limited, like such companies are there, that is central government notified companies. Okay. After this, we go into section number two. Section number two is about definitions. In definitions, we will first see the main numbering of the definition and then we'll proceed ahead. Section number two, clause 20 is company. Two clause 55, as you know, is members. Two clause 75 is registrar of companies. Two clause 74, register of companies. Two clause 71, public companies. Two clause 68, private companies. Two clause 71 has two parts. Two clause 52, public companies. Companies which are not public are called unlisted public companies. Listed companies, that is two clause 52, uh, are listed with recognized stock exchange that is in covered in two clause 73, that is recognized stock exchange. Uh, companies that are unlimited, uh, companies which are unlimited are covered in two clause 92 companies which are not unlimited are limited companies which is which is uh, which has two parts two clause 21 company limited by guarantee and two clause 22 company limited by shares two clause 5 is aoa two clause 56 moa two clause um, 13 is books of accounts two clause 40 is financial statements two clause 12 is book and paper and books or paper Two clause 57 is net worth of the company. Two clause 43 is free reserves. Two clause 35 is dividend. Um, uh, two clause 91 is turnover of the company. Simple. Two clause 10 is board of directors. Two clause 34 directors. Two clause 17 CA. Two clause 18 CEO. Two clause 19 CFO. Two clause 24 CS. Two clause 25 CS in practice. Uh, then after that, two clause 51 is KMP. Two clause. Um, 59 officer to clause 60 officer in default to clause um, 69 is promoter and to clause 94 is whole time director to clause 46 is holding company to clause 87 subsidiary company to clause 6 associate company uh, to clause 27 is control after that we go into the pairings part let's do it one by one let's see this to clause 4 is tribunal to clause 90 to clause uh, 90 is tribunal to clause 4 is appellate tribunal Two clause um, 42 is foreign company. Two clause 45 is government company. Two clause 62 is one person company. Two clause 85 is small company. Two clause 76 is related parties to a company. Two clause 77 is relatives of any person. Then after that, we have uh, the next pairing will be in relation to Two clause 84 is shares, two clause 88 is sweat equity shares, two clause 37 is ESOP. Okay. Uh, this is what we cover in relation to the definition part, the major definition headings. Okay. Let's go to the important ones in this. Okay. So, in that, the definition of members that we did is very, very important. Any person who is a memorandum to the subscriber of the company is a member of the company. Any person who is um, who has agreed to purchase the shares of the company becomes a member of the company. Okay. Then we have two clause um, 70. One that is public company in public company. They have written any company that is not a private company is a public company in that they have written one more thing that if there is a private company, which is a subsidiary company and a public company, which is the holding company, then even though this private company in its articles is a private company, but because it's a holding company is a public company, that is a company that is not a private company. They have written like this. If a private company is, uh, has a holding company, which is not a private company, it means it's a public company. In that case, this private company, even though it is a private company in its articles, but still it will be deemed as a public company for the purpose of application of the Companies Act 2013. Okay. 
Then after that, we had two clause sixty-eight. That is, which companies are private companies? So let's go into a little bit of depth in this. Any company that restricts the transfer of shares is a private company. Minimum number of members is two. Maximum number of members is two hundred. Private companies prohibit public issue of shares. That is a private company. Simple, clear. That is basically this part. Next is we go into section number two, clause thirteen. That is books of accounts. So in books of account, what do we see? In books of account, we see that any Mr. Spalik, any record of Mr. Spalik, is your books of accounts. That is money received and expended, sales and purchases, assets and liabilities, items of cost. Two clause twelve. That is book and paper and book or paper. In that, what do we see? In book and paper, we had seen that. Uh, sir, if any kind of minutes, any kind of registers, any kind of documents, any kind of account books, any kind of writings, vouchers, deeds, will be covered in the definition of book and paper and book or paper. Okay. Now after that, we had done two clause forty. That is foreign company. In that, we had seen um, any company that maintains books of accounts. Any sorry, any company that uh, um, financial statements. That is any company that is maintaining its balance sheet. Sorry, profit and loss account, cash flow statements, explanatory notes, and statement of changes in equity. That is called as financial statements. Next is your section number. Uh, Uh, to clause 57 that is in relation to net worth in net worth we had seen something called as pass pay down so that is basically this paid a capital of the company the accumulated reserves of the company and the secondary stream account have to be added profit and loss account ba based on whether it is a credit balance or debit balance it will be added or debited or added or subtracted next is uh, your um, deferred expenditure which is not written off will be deducted Accumulated losses will be deducted, and miscellaneous expense expenditure not written off will be deducted. Okay, that is the definition of net worth of a company. Then free reserves. Any reserve from which you can pay dividend is called as free reserves. Four things are never covered in free reserves: revaluation reserve, unrealized gains, notional gains, and even though you have valued any asset or liability at its fair value. still it will not be a part of the free reserves okay very very simple we had done a code in the class called run fair okay after this we do the next area that is in relation to uh, section number 2 clause 35 favorite definition that is dividend includes any interim dividend okay this is what we had done now after that we had done uh, section 2 clause um, 51 that is kmp i'm doing the important ones that is 51 that is important kmp kmp is mcm ccw one wicket keeper that is nothing but managing director ceo manager cfo cs whole time director any person who is working one level below the board of directors in whole time employment and who has been designated as a kmp okay that person is a kmp next is your uh, two clause um, 60 important that is an officer in default a list as is there basically uh, directors can be officers in default any person who has been given responsibility by the directors is an officer in default and this marking i had given to you in the class okay you can go through the list there is two clause 69 that is promoter we had done something called as mr pakdi is a promoter so we had seen any person whose name is there in the prospectus any person whose name is there in the annual return any person who controls the affairs of the company any person on whose advice direction instruction the board of directors are accustomed to act okay Next is your two clause um, 94. That is whole time director. Who is a whole time director? A person who is in whole time employment in the company in the position of a director is called as a whole time director. One more term for whole time director is executive director. Okay. Next after that we had done something called as um, two clause 46 holding company. Holding company is a company when it is holding another company. So you have to look at the subsidiary company definition now. Subsidiary company is defined in section two clause eighty seven. In that they have written that if any company is in in which any other company is having control in the in these two forms. That is basically when you are controlling the composition of the board of directors or in the case of uh, voting power, you are holding. More than one half of the total voting power. So, if you are holding any one of these two, that is controlling the composition of the board of directors, or more than one half of the total voting power, more than one half means more than fifty percent. In that case, it means you are being controlled by another company, and you become a subsidiary company, and that other company becomes a holding company. Any company in which 
one company is having 20% to 50% of the total voting power then that other company becomes your associate company so if i am holding 20% to 50% in another company then that other company becomes my associate company next is if a limited and b limited start a joint venture together to build a project together then a limited becomes b limited's associate and b limited becomes a limited's associate company okay that is when companies are into joint venture with each other next is after that we had done uh, two clause let's do 42 that is foreign company if a company is incorporated outside india having a place of business in india either by itself or agent or physically or by electronic means and conducts business activity in india such company is called as a foreign company then we had done two clause um, 45 that is government company if 51 percent or more or you can write there at least 51 percent or you can write there not less than 51 percent it means the same if 51 percent or more is held by the central government or state government or partly by the central government partly by one or more of the state government and includes the subsidiary of a government company then that is the definition of a government company okay this one in this please be careful that if the shares are issued in if the shares are issued with differential voting rights in that case you will not take 51 percent of the paid capital you will take 51 percent of the total voting power just remember that matter next is two clause 62 very simple one person company any company is a one person company if it has only one person as a member next is your two clause 85 that is small company any company having a paid capital of four crores and a turnover of 40 crores is a small company as per the definition right now okay so for the november 2023 students this is the definition of small company if you are watching a video in the future and your attempt is after november 23 you have to just check the definition of small company uh, what are the what is the limit now so now it is for uh, paid capital four crores and turnover 40 crores it might have changed for your attempt okay just check it once or you can check in my channel channel also because i would have given the amendments in a separate video okay then after that we had done something called as two clause uh, small company one more point i forgot to tell you this which companies can never be small companies a uh, company formed under any special act never a small company a uh, subsidiary company is a never a small company holding company is never a small company section 8 companies are never small companies okay so just remember this and small companies will always be private companies only uh, public companies cannot be small companies after that we are done um, the next area that is in relation to two clause 70 seven that is relatives to an individual okay relatives to a company there's a diagram you can just go through that flow very simple but relatives to an individual are who now relatives to an individual if you click on two clause 77 no it is given a, a given as this hindu undivided family members are relatives of each other husband and wife are relatives of each other and as prescribed and it is prescribed in rule four of the company specification of definition details rules 2014 now in that what they have said is father including stepfather mother including stepmother brother including stepbrother sister including stepsister spouse son including stepson son's wife daughter daughter's husband are covered in your definition of relatives okay very simple to understand that uh, i think covers the definition of this area next after that we will do the definition in relation to sweat equity shares and esop esop is given in 2 clause 37 but esop is not covered in a big way it is covered in section number 62 later but understand two uh, two clause 88 that is sweat equity shares whenever the company issues shares and to acquire any other person's know-how intellectual property property rights or value additions and they are giving shares which may or may not be given at a discount okay normally it is given at a discount if the company does that then that is called sweat equity shares as per two clause 88 of the company's act okay now that completes the overview of this chapter the importance of this chapter is in my opinion very important because you can use the definitions as your key tools while writing the paper example when you're writing um, something in relation to the net worth of the company you can always mention their net worth calculated as per two clause 57 of the company's act when you're writing something in relation to let's say free reserves you can always write their uh, free reserves calculated as per two clause 43 of the company's act so you understand the importance you can use this as a tool to refer at various points in your paper don't overdo it suppose if you know all the numbers and definitions properly don't overdo it it doesn't mean that wherever you write the word company 
you are writing that 2 cross 20. Don't overdo it. It means that you are just telling the examiner, see, I know the definitions too much. Okay. So ensure that you are using it as a tool. My specific objective is to ensure that you are mentioning at least two section numbers and clause numbers wherever the keywords are being written. This enhances the quality of your paper. Okay. So ensure that you are doing that. I wish you all the best. Study well. Stay in touch. Write in the comment section below what other videos you want me to put. I'll be uploading revision videos of law for November 23 at a, you know on at a more frequent interval now. And I hope you enjoy these quick revision videos. If you like the video, click the like button. If you want to share it with your friends, please feel free and share it so that they also come to know that this video, video is uploaded and it has help, helped you. And also, if you want me to cover any other series that you have a query in, please mention in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to solve it. Okay. Take care. All the very best. Bye-bye.